This is one of the most beautiful masjids that I have been to, mashallah. And the people here are so beautiful as well. May Allah beautify our hearts and may Allah grant us Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah ease the suffering that we are going through in this world as mankind. So many people are struggling in so many different places. There are people right now who are suffering that we don't even know how much they are suffering. You and I know that in Palestine, in Gaza, there are great struggles. They are being bombarded, they are being killed. Innocent people, women, children, men, and it is happening wholesale every day. We pray for them. May Allah Almighty make it easy for them. May Allah Almighty grant them goodness and victory and peace and stability. Amin. Nonetheless, we are talking today about the times of hardship. And I have 20 minutes in which I want to remind you of a story that you know. You know the story. But I want to raise a few lessons from the story in order for you and I to be able to navigate through our own problems. We all have problems. I have some problems. You have problems. Nobody can say, I have no problem. But the level of problem is different. Some people it's more, some people it's less. Allah Almighty tests a believer. Anything that you are going through, good or bad, if it brings you close to Allah, it is a gift of Allah. And anything you are going through, if it takes you away from Allah, it could be the punishment of Allah. So whenever you are going through anything, good or bad, Get closer to Allah. Okay, the question I have, who was the most handsome from among the prophets of Allah? Can anyone say a name? I can hear two names. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Yusuf alayhi salam. Right? As for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the companions said, his face was as though it's a part of the moon. It was shining, amazing. He was created in the most beautiful, amazing way. Some of the companions even said that you have been created in such a way that it seems that you were created the way you wanted to be created. Subhanallah. Nonetheless, from the stories of the prophets in the Quran, the most handsome was Yusuf alayhi salam. But he had problem after problem after problem after problem. Subhanallah. Allah mentions in the Quran, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ بِمَا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ Subhanallah. Allah says, we are narrating to you the best of stories. Imagine the most handsome and the story is the best. But that story is full of hardship, full of difficulty from the beginning. A young boy, innocent boy, so good looking. When you see a good looking child, you say, oh, mashallah, come here, come here, come here. Right? Good looking child and you are so happy, but you don't realize the older brothers of that child were jealous of the child only because the father was showing more care to that particular child. When you are old and you have small child, small siblings younger than you, your brother, your sister younger than you and you are old, your father will play. Hey, right with the little one. Hey. And you say, when I was young, my father did not do that. When you were young, you cannot remember. 
you are now big you want your father to look at you and say hey do you want your father to do that no so you don't know just chill just relax take it easy don't get jealous the brothers were jealous of him but he was innocent so they go to the father and they lied to their own father among them they were planning to kill their own brother look at how shaitan works my brothers and sisters in hardship or when you do not have hardship don't allow shaitan to overtake you in a way that he makes you plan that which is displeasing to allah something displeasing to allah you are going through a tough time you want to do something bad i know some people when they are going through a difficult time or they want to marry someone and they cannot marry for some reason what is your destiny it's not going to change beyond a certain degree remember if allah wrote that this person is not going to be married to this one then even if you love that person so much it's not going to happen it, it, you are not the first person it happened to all of us sometimes you're growing up and say mm, inshallah one day i'll marry this person no way it might not happen subhanallah but some people go to magician you know what is magician black magic what do they call it in bahasa Ru rukun la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah rukun a'udhu billah what you know what i'm so confused with the name i'm so happy that i'm confused because i don't want to go there when you go there you lose your iman you know you think that okay please share can you do this can you do this for me wallahi if there is anything superstitious involved in that you are playing with your faith and your connection with allah there was a man recently on facebook he suffered because of someone who did magic on him so what did he do he wanted to pay back he wanted to what pay back so he said on facebook i am a magician and anyone wants to do magic this is my whatsapp number send me listen listen this is a true story you can check it if you know arabic you can see it's in arabic it's on facebook he says he's a magician if you want to do magic this is my whatsapp number send me your photo the photo of the person you want to do the magic and hold a paper next to your face your name their name and what you want to do to them and i will do it you won't believe he got hundreds of people who did that hundreds of people send him their photo the photo of the one they want the magic with the names and what they want to do you know what he did he published everything on facebook to disgrace everyone most of them oh mashallah hijab big mashallah songko salat mashallah everything happening they look like good muslim but they are all asking for haram wallahi that is a disaster when i saw it i said la hawla wala quwwata illa billahi alali alazim may allah save us just because you want to get something that you don't have or you are jealous of someone you want to block something that allah gave them you lose your iman how don't do that it is haram man sahara faqad ashraka whoever does magic has done shirk that's what the hadith says and whoever goes to a fortune teller a soothsayer one of these people who claim that they know the future anyone who goes to them and believes what they have to say they have disbelieved in what muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam brought man ata arrafan aw kahinan fasaddaqahu bima akhbar 
فقد كفر بما أنزل على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. so don't go there. the brothers of Yusuf عليه السلام were jealous of him. they wanted to kill him. but the older brother said no, just throw him away. throw him away. who do you think he is? he is a human. he is your brother. He's good looking on top of that. When you see a cute baby that does not belong to you, what do you say? Can I adopt this child? Am I right? You see cute babies. They say, can I not adopt this child? Especially if they are struggling or refugee or something. Often when you go choosing, for example, someone, some orphans to try and look after them, people look at what they look like. Imagine in Islam, whether you look like whatever, you're an orphan, you're an orphan. You can be white or black or yellow or whatever, even green, no problem. If that is the color Allah gave you, Alhamdulillah, I'm happy. So they said, throw him. What happened to the young boy? Wallahi, these people, they lied to the father. They said, oh, our father. أرسله معنا غدا يرتع ويلعب وإنا له لحافظون. Send him with us tomorrow. We will play. We will have fun. We will have a good time, and we will protect him. We'll bring him back. The father says, إني أخاف. I fear. What do I fear? I fear that perhaps he will be harmed. Maybe a wolf might come and eat him. The father said this. Anyway, because of time, I'm going to cut the story because you know the story, right? What I want to say is in hardship, those who were patient and they bore sabr, Allah gave them so much at the end. And those who were not bearing patience they had no sabr they did haram allah destroyed them at the end dropped them underneath below so the first one the brothers they were jealous they did not want their brother to go up above them what happened because of their plan because of their plan allah raised yusuf alayhi salam above them if they did not take Yusuf and throw him in the well, he was not going to be above them. You follow? If they did not take Yusuf alayhi salam and they did not throw him in the well, then the people who picked him up were not going to pick him up. If they did not pick him up, they were not going to sell him in the market. If they did not sell him in the market, the Aziz of Misr was not going to buy him. If he did not buy him, the incident with the wife of the Aziz was not going to happen. And if the incident did not happen, he was not going to be jailed. And if he was not jailed, he was not going to meet those two guys in the jail who had some dreams that he interpreted. And if he did not meet those two guys and did not interpret the dreams, he was not going to be called out the day that the king had a dream. And if he was not called out the day that the king had a dream, he was not going to be interpreting the dreams. And if he did not interpret those dreams, the king was not going to appoint him in charge of the granary. And if he was not appointed in charge of the granary, then his brothers would have not come begging for food from him. But Allah wanted in 10 moves to raise this man above all of those who planned to bring him down. And so Allah raised him so high above all of those who planned to bring him down. What I want to tell you, when someone plans to bring you down, those who have taqwa and sabr, Allah will never ever waste the reward of those who do good. Someone plans your downfall, don't worry. Sabr, taqwa. 
They plan another thing, sabr, taqwa. They plan a third thing, sabr, taqwa. When you have sabr and taqwa, Allah will raise you high and high and high and high in his eyes a little bit of time. How many years did it take to get from the well to the day when you met your brothers? How many years? There are several narrations. Some say more than 40 years. More than 40 years. You and I, if I suffer today, I suffer tomorrow, I suffer next week, I have a problem at work, I have a problem at home, I have a problem on, on the street, I have a problem somewhere else, they will say, someone did magic on me. Let me go to the, whatever you call them, Bomo or whatever it is, right? Let me go. And they will start saying, mm, come here, come here. Come here. Then they will do something and say, ah, yes. I think your sister-in-law is jealous of you, right? I think your mother-in-law is doing something to you. I think someone in your family, in your broad family, someone is doing some, wallahi, they are telling lies. Why? Every family has some small problems here and there. My family has small problems here and there maybe. Some are slightly bigger, some are smaller, depending on the family. If you have a big family, you have to have difference, right? So if I tell you, brother, you have a headache. Yes, someone in your family is doing something. Why break my family, man? I have a headache, one panado paracetamol. I'm okay, alhamdulillah. Khalas, khalas. Don't blame people. You have a problem. It does not mean someone did something. Sometimes you need to go to the doctor. Sometimes there is something inside that is wrong. Sometimes you are not connected to Allah. Allah will never let the people who do good. Allah will never let their reward be wasted. So please understand. Look at Yusuf alayhi salam. One after the other. Everything was going wrong. Right? wrong but at the end you know what his brothers told him that's the best question in that whole story in the whole story the best question is are you maybe perhaps you are yusuf <laughs> imagine he's sitting here i know what you did to me i know are you yusuf what did he say? Ana Yusuf wa hadha akhi qad manna Allahu alayna I am Yusuf this is my brother Allah has favored us Allah has what favored us what favor you went through one problem another problem a third problem a fourth problem a fifth problem so many problems one after the other when you came out of all those problems you forgot everything it's okay why i'm with allah allah raised me above you waqad ahsana bi id akhrajani min as-sijn look at how he's looking at the positive thing he said allah favored me when he removed me from the prison he didn't say Allah punished me when he put me in the prison. He did not talk about going in. He spoke about coming out in your life, in my life. When you have a problem, don't talk about the problem. Talk about how you came out of it. Look at the favors of Allah. Allah will give you when you thank him. Allah will give you when you count the favors. I want to tell you something. How many problems do you have in your life? One minute, count. How many problems do you have in your life? Can you count? So someone might say, I have a problem at school. I have a problem at home. I have a problem maybe with my health. I have a problem. I don't have hair. Some people for that is a big problem, right? It's okay. I also don't have hair. No problem. Someone said, I'm not yet married. I want to look for a spouse. Someone said, I have a problem. I'm divorced. How many problems? How many? Five or ten. Who has more than ten problems? Put up your hand. More than ten big problems. Put up your hand. Okay, few. Maybe twelve for some of them. But most of us, less than ten major problems. 
That is the problems. What about the favors of Allah? How many do you have? I have my eyes, my ears, my nose, my tongue, my teeth, my lips, my cheeks, my hair, my forehead, my eyebrows, whatever else, my fingers, my toes, my, my kidneys, my lungs, my heart. My heart is pumping 136,000 times a day without a battery. I have my, my liver is functioning, my kidneys, everything is moving. I'm walking my bones, my legs, my hands, and I am subhanallah. Allah says only to look at what you have in your body. It's enough. You will not be able to count that ever to go out. Mashallah, we have a country, we have air, we have beautiful electricity, we have water in the tap, we have so much. Allah says you cannot count. My colleague read this verse before me, right? He, she, Dr. Muhammad, he read the verse. If you are to count the favors of Allah, you will never be able to. But if you want to count the difficulties, you can count them. Look at Allah. You want to count how hard it is? You can count. Count how good it is? You cannot count the goodness. Too much. Too many things. So concentrate on this. May Allah make it easy. Then I want to tell you. Yusuf alayhi salam. He did not hold grudge against his brothers. He knew what they did. What did he tell them? Why I want to tell you this is because we need to learn to forgive people. We need to learn to forgive people. Me going up and closer to Allah is not connected to you going down. I don't need you to go down for me to go up. We can all go up together. No problem. If I want to go to Jannah, do I need to say, Oh Allah, give me Jannah. Don't give them Jannah. Should I say that? Jannah is very, very big, very big. We have a problem. Nowadays you have different groups of Muslims. Each one says we are going to Jannah and the other one is going to Jahannam, right? Muslims. So I was talking to one guy. He said, everyone is going to Jannah. I said, well, your Jannah is going to be empty. One person, two people, khalas. You will be shocked. Jannah is so big. You will be there. I will be there. Those guys will be there. We will all be there. May Allah give us all Jannah. Say, Amin. Amin, Amin. Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum. So Yusuf alayhi salam tells his brothers, لا تثريب عليكم اليوم يغفر الله لكم وهو أرحم الراحمين. No retribution against you. I am not going to do anything against you. No revenge. It's okay. Today you are forgiven. Allah will forgive you. He is the most forgiving, the most merciful. الله أكبر. My own. That solved the problem. If you want to hold it in your heart, you will become bitter. Your, your back becomes problematic. You are sick because you have too much hate in your heart. Learn to forgive people. It's okay. Forgive, forgive, forgive. In my life, I forgive everyone. Halas. Me. I forgive everyone. You know, if you go online, any ustaz, anyone in the whole world, there are people who are supporting and people who are against. Sometimes the people against, they don't know you. They don't know who you are, what you stand for, nothing. They just read something, put some, no problem. Habibi, I will go to Jannah with you. Let's go, let's go. Don't worry. In the dunya, you fight me. Nah, no problem. But in the akhirah, come, let's go to Jannah. Inshallah, we will go together. Right? Have a good heart. Have a good heart. I don't care. Maybe you have a misunderstanding. But if I say, Astaghfirullah, that one, look what he said. Look what he did. My life will change for bad. I'm wasting my time. The last example I want to give you. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was entering Mecca at the time of the victory of Mecca, Quraysh, you know what they did? They killed the Muslims. They stole the land. They stole the property. They troubled them for so many years. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at them, he asked them, what do you think I'm going to do to you today? He was powerful. He had 100,000 plus with him as Muslimin. What do you think 
He said, what do you think I'm going to do to you today? They were all quiet. They know what they did. He says, Idhabu fa antumutulaka. You can go. All of you are free. La tathriba alaykum ulyom. I will tell you exactly what the Prophet Joseph Yusuf alayhi salam told his brothers. Go, for indeed you are all free today. No retribution. It's okay. Forgiven and let's go. We need to move forward. May Allah Almighty strengthen us. May He allow us to learn lesson. In hardship, become closer to Allah. In hardship, read the stories of the prophets. In hardship, read other stories where it shows you and inspires you to bear patience and to go forth. And the last thing is that in hardship, always believe. Inna ma'al usri yusra. Inna ma'al usri yusra. Indeed, with hardship, there is ease. And with the same hardship, there is another ease. So with every hardship, there are two points of ease. And beyond Allah causes the, the sun to rise after the dark night. So when you are in darkness, bear patience. The sun will rise. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة